All right. And we are recording for our friends later. Okie doke. Let's get started. You ready? Okay, she's ready. So let's bring the hands together. And just take a few breaths. And on your next exhale, lower your arms by your sides. Inhale, just reach the arms overhead, palms touch. Arms to the sides again for the exhale. Reach up, inhale. This time, knuckles to the sides of your thighs, exhale. So it's still just arms down, but you're just keeping a shoulder rotation. Inhale, reach up. Last time, arms by our sides, the palms facing out. Inhale, reach up. Then fold forward for the exhale. Come halfway up for the inhale. And just step back to plank. And let's stay here for a few breaths. If you have any wrist pain, instead of staying here, either come to your forearms or just go to downward dog. Next exhale, bend the elbows. Inhale to the top of the foot, upward facing dog. Downward dog for the exhale. We'll all meet there. Straight arms, straight legs. Maybe shake out the head. There's lots of wiggling that we can do. Let's lift the heels high, inhale. Just one breath in puppy. Bend the knees and your butt is gonna stick up toward the sky. Keep the arms straight. It's like you're pushing your chest toward your legs. And draw the belly in so you're a little rounded. Look forward and after your exhale, jump forward. Inhale when you get there. Fold, exhale. Rise all the way up, inhale. We're just going to fold again for the exhale. Either fingertips or palms down. Then inhale, either fingertips or hands to shins. Step to plank. Just feel that your hips are not sagging. You won't really know because you don't have a, a visual on yourself. But you should feel super comfortable in the back right now. Your low back shouldn't feel strained at all. If it is feeling strained, err on the side of lifting your hips too high. Let's exhale to Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. And downward facing, exhale. We'll stay here again a few breaths. We're really trying to go for somewhat of a neutral back. It is a forward bend, but we don't want to round the back and we don't want to stick our butt out too much. So there is a fine line. We're pushing down into the floor with the hands to help lengthen. Turn it into puppy. Heels up high, knees bend, chest moves toward the legs. And it's tempting here to stick your butt up a lot and over arch. So instead of doing that, draw your belly in, air on the side of rounding. This is gonna help in the jumping forward. Look between the hands and after your exhale, jump. Inhale when you get there, full exhale. Rise all the way up, inhale. And fold again, exhale. Halfway up, inhale, and to plank, exhale. So as long as you're comfortable in your wrists, for the exhale next, we'll go to down dog B, butt up, elbows down. For the next inhale, return to straight arm plank. Just shift the weight forward and your elbows will lift up. Let's do that two more times, or you could always stay where you were, for two breaths. 
And notice how much your ankles are working. When you go to down dog B, your heels are pressing, pressing down. And when you return to plank, the ankles are pushing you forward. And from straight arm plank, bend the elbows, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. And exhale, downward facing. And just shake out the head, belly in, arms super straight. Like you're pulsed by the floor. Turn it into puppy. This time, if you can handle one extra thought, you're going to get a little more rotation in your shoulders. So try to point your little elbows down so the crease of the elbow goes more up. And you'll feel more space by your ears. Belly in. After the exhale, jump forward. Inhale. Fold, exhale. Rise all the way up. Inhale. Fold, exhale. Halfway up. Inhale. Then bend into the knees. Exhale. And sit your weight into your heels. Arms up. Utkatasana. And we'll stay here for a few breaths. Or I'm just going to back up because I don't know how much is visible. Just bring your arms by your side like you did before, palms facing out. And just breathe in that way. It takes a lot of attention to keep your palms facing out, almost like your thumbs are trying to touch near your butt. One more breath, either moving the arms or not. And we're going to meet with our arms up. Next, exhale, straight legs and fold. Halfway up, inhale, and step or jump, chatter on the exhale. Upward facing, inhale, downward facing, exhale. Right foot forward, just a high lunge, back heel will stay up. And let's take cactus arms for the exhale. Next, inhale, straighten the front leg and reach up. Exhale, cactus arms, let's bend both knees. Inhale, straighten everything. Exhale, bend everything. One more time, keep digging your front heel into the ground. Inhale, everything straight, and just a chaturanga for your exhale. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Left foot forward, high lunge, arms up, inhale, to cactus arms, exhale. Straighten the front leg as you reach up, inhale, and bend everything, exhale. So that's Anjane Asana. Inhale, straighten everything. Exhale, bend. Inhale. Notice your right hip travels forward when you straighten the leg. As you exhale, try to keep your right hip forward. So you keep the integrity of that pose. And to chaturanga for the exhale. Upward facing for your inhale. And we'll meet in downward dog with either straight arms or forearms down. A few breaths. I'm just going to check in that everyone has arrived. Okie doke. Oops. And let's lift the heels high. Inhale. Take it to that puppy pose again. So bend the knees. Belly in. And try looking past your fingers this time and jump forward so that you land between the hands. Straight legs, inhale, fold, exhale. Bend into the knees, inhale, reach up. Arms interlace or fingers interlace behind the back. We're going to keep the knees bent and just straighten the arms. So you'll feel your chest lift. We'll try to get the arms off the butt. 
Take one more breath here, chest up, maybe chin up. And let's fold and straighten the legs, keeping the arms reaching overhead. You might need to separate your palms. You might want to separate your feet to hips width. You might want to keep your knees bent. Whatever it is that you're choosing, try to keep relaxing your neck. Come up just a few inches, slip the fingers apart, and step or jump back, chaturanga, exhale. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Right foot forward, high lunge, inhale. And let's interlace the fingers behind the back, just like you did. And let the knuckles reach toward your back foot. And feel free to stay here, or just shift your chest forward a little bit and let your back leg slide in and up. So you wind up in a warrior three style pose with the thumbs lifting up toward the ceiling. And regardless if you're in the lunge or the warrior three, your, your leg, your lifted leg, your left leg is straight, your back leg if you're in the lunge. Let's bend the right knee. Gracefully step back if you're in the balance and reach up, inhale. To chaturanga, exhale. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Left foot forward between the hands. Reach up, inhale. And interlace behind the back. Try to go the, th the way that feels a little goofy so that it doesn't feel quite so natural. You have to think about it more. Arms straight, chest up. And either stay there or just lean forward. Slide the back leg in and up. Either position, it feels like your knuckles are reaching toward your right heel. And either position, that right leg is working towards straight. We'll meet in that lunge again. So gracefully bend that left knee if you were in a straight warrior three. Inhale to a normal high lunge. Hands to the floor, exhale, shutter under. Upward facing, inhale. And downward facing, exhale. One. Two. Three, maybe start turning it into puppy if you think that's helpful. Four, and five. After the exhale, jump forward. Inhale when you get there. Fold, exhale. Bend to the knees. Inhale, reach up. Let's bring the right arm, just gonna face this way, right arm under the left. Interlace the fingers so that you can get your palms together. And once your palms are together, just release the, the fingers and have normal hand-to-hand -hand contact. So we'll just sit the weight into the heels, elbows up. And when you can, step your left foot back. So you're just in a lunge again with your arms wrapped. And we'll just arch a little bit to let the elbows come up a little bit higher. And slowly unravel the arms, reach up, inhale, and step back, exhale. Upward facing, inhale, downward facing, exhale, jump forward, inhale. So I didn't give you any time there, exhale to fold. Bend into the knees, reach up, and left arm under the right. And you could, if you're having trouble getting the hands together, left arm on the right, walk your fingers to your shoulder blades. Give yourself a big hug. Once you have a big hug, just keep your elbows in place and start to work on getting the hands to line up. 
And when you can, right foot is going to step back. Elbows will lift up. The chest will go with you. The chin will go with you. And we'll slowly unravel, reach, and hands to the floor, chaturanga, exhale. Upward facing, inhale. Complete the inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Complete the exhale. Look past the fingers, jump. Then inhale there at the top of the mat. Exhale to fold. Bend into the knees, inhale, reach up. And let's take opposite elbows behind the back. So if that's easy, go fist bump. If that's easy, go reverse prayer. And whichever of those three, you're pressing your elbows back. Then when you can, left foot steps back. So we're just in a lunge. And it's like your forearms or the edge of your hand, whichever is touching you more, is lifting you. It's pushing from the back to lift your chest up. Unravel the arms, reach up, inhale. To chaturanga, exhale. Inhale, upward facing. So every movement gets a breath, downward facing, exhale. The jump is between breath. Inhale at the top of the mat. Fold, exhale. Bend the knees, inhale. And reach behind you for one of those three options. This is the easiest on the shoulder. This is next, this is next. Also wrists play a role, so go gently. You wanna be able to practice every day. You don't wanna injure yourself by overdoing it one day. So right foot steps back. And you give yourself a little nudge between the shoulder blades. You lift up. If you have any back issues, you might want to bend the back knee. Makes it a little more gentle. And slowly release, arms up, inhale. To chaturanga, exhale. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale, then jump forward. Feet to hands. Inhale when you get there, fold, exhale, bend to the knees, inhale, and then just hands to normal prayer. We're going to place our right ankle on our left lower thigh and lean forward. Just stick your butt out a bit, get into that right hip. Your right knee is moving toward the ground. Take one more breath here. We're just going to step the right foot back and pivot around for warrior two with the right knee bent. And we're not going to do anything fancy, so if your computer is set up at the other side of your mat, don't worry. It's just a simple warrior two. Simple but not easy. So remember your triceps, lift up with the tricep muscles so you feel like you're raising them up into the arm bone. And let's just straighten that right leg, pivot around, hands to the floor, chaturanga, exhale. And we'll cycle through the vinyasa and we'll practice that jumping forward again. Feel free to turn it into puppy, look past your fingers and jump when you're empty of breath, so you can inhale at the top. Hold, exhale. Bend into the knees, inhale. Hands to prayer, left ankle to lower right thigh. Butt back, chest forward. I should have had my sweat rag closer. Gotta go get it. Okay. Oh, Lord. Okay, so keep that right foot anchored where it is. Just step the left foot back. 
Once you're settled in your lunge, then pivot around. Bend into that left leg. And the gaze is over the left middle finger. Unless that's a weird neck position for you. Drop your tailbone toward the floor. Let's straighten that left leg, pivot around. Hands to the floor, vinyasa. We'll meet in downward dog. Let's just lift the right leg up high to the ceiling. And bring that knee to the right wrist. Exhale. And just stay there for a moment. And think of lifting your mid-back up toward the ceiling. Three-legged dog on an inhale. And then take that same strength and just step your right foot between your hands. Hopefully it lands nicely. If it lands back here somewhere, Joan has a great technique. Hold the ankle and just lift it up. It works. Reach up, high lunge. Warrior two, exhale. Straighten the right leg, inhale. Bend it, exhale. Straighten, inhale. Bend, exhale. Parshvokanasana, either elbow to thigh, or right hand down, or on uh, Friday we did a bazillion binds, maybe you want to bind. You want to figure out a way that gets into your hips mostly, and then into your shoulders if that's something that you want today. One more breath. And we'll rise back up to warrior two. Straighten the leg again. Scoop the left foot just a little bit in. Triangle pose, reach out and down. Left arm either up or over your ear or behind your back. If binds are hard for you, going behind your back is going to start to make them easier. We'll reach up again and rise up to that T shape. And for this next, I'm just going to scoot this way because you stay where you are. We're just going to think about this region. We're just going to enter triangle again, reaching out and down. No hands, though, just light. And rise up again using the core to lift you up. Two more times, reach out and down. It's tempting to put a lot of weight on that right arm, but there's not really a lot of weight there. Rise up. One more time. It's really a pulling up with the right arm if you have that big toe grip. And rise up. Ardha Chandrasana. Bend into the right knee enough to shift your weight onto it. Left arm either up or find your left foot with your left hand. And this time, instead of staying put, we're going to look down because balance will be a lot easier. We're just going to bend the right knee a few inches and re-straighten it. And we'll bend it. And when you re-straighten it, try to open your hip a little more so that you can spin open toward the ceiling. One more time. It's easier to get movement on that straightening action. And slowly release the top foot, hands down, and step into plank. And we'll just stay in plank and make sure the hips are not droopy. You can always put your knees down. You can always look at your belly button. That's going to help make sure that they're not droopy. And try to run for your exhale. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Take a few breaths here, which is really just going to buy me time to spin around and to wipe the drooping sweat off my face. Okay, so from down dog, we'll lift the left leg up high. Inhale. And knee to the left elbow. So we're using a lot of abs here, but also your right leg has to be really strong. 
If your right leg is not committed, that will add to the droopy factor. Left leg up high, inhale. And step to the hands, exhale. If it didn't land where you want, just transfer it further forward. Arms up, inhale. And warrior two, exhale. We'll just straighten that left leg. Adjust the pants a little bit and rebend. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. I need a third. Let's go one more time. It didn't quite click clack into place. Okay. Now partial kanasana. Either elbow down or whatever version you did before. If you are extending your right arm over your ear, like what I chose to do, try to look at your hand. Then you can see if your shoulder is rotating properly, because your pinky finger will be angled down. And we'll slowly come on up. Straighten the left leg. Scoot the right foot in a little bit. Triangle pose. Reach out and down. So whatever you do with the top arm, choose something. Now think about your bottom arm. If it's up by your knee or shin, it's tempting to dump a lot of weight. That doesn't mean you can't put it by your knee or shin. It just means you have to be lighter in the hand. If you are holding your big toe grip, it's like you're trying to pull up and get your toe detached from the ground, but your toe is pushing down into the floor, so the net movement is zero. Let's unreach or unwind, I should say, the right arm, and rise up. And we'll just try the entrance three times. Reach out and down, and use the core to rise up again. the exhale that brings you down, and it's an inhale that brings you up. If you have any hamstring pain, of course, bend the knee. You guys know that by now, I do believe. And then we'll bend into that left leg. Oops, no we won't. Ardha Chandrasana. Shift into your balance. And reach for your right ankle if you did it on the other side. Normally in this pose, we look up. But for now, look down. Try to bend your left leg a little bit. And as you re-straighten it, chest up higher. Two more times. Exhale to bend. Keep kicking. Inhale to straighten. One more time. And then we'll let that go. Meet in plank. Straight legs, unless you're choosing the modification, which is knees down. But there's not really any in between. On your exhale, bend the elbows. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale to downward facing. A few breaths. Let's lift the right leg up high, inhale, and bring it between the hands, exhale. High lunge, inhale, and like you did before, right arm under left, so that you have the palms touching. And take your time if you need to give yourself a hug, go for shoulder blades with your fingers. When you're comfy, the back leg is gonna come up and over. So your left leg winds up on top. I'm just going to scoot back a smidge. And then we wind up in eagle. You can also have your foot behind your ankle. We're squeezing all the limbs together. We'll keep this arm position, unravel the left leg and extend it back. So your legs are like warrior three. And then we're just going to work to rotate that left leg in which means that your left hip will move down toward the floor. 
Your left inner thigh needs to move up toward the ceiling. And bend the right leg, step back to your lunge, unravel the arms, inhale. And either vinyasa or downward dog, exhale. Inhaling, you're either already in down dog or you took the up dog. And we meet in downward dog. And I wipe sweat again. Okay, left leg up high. Inhale. Step to the hands. Exhale. So it's a nice long lunge, stable. Arms up. And then left under right. I just do a little momentum action. But um, it's really nice to go the slow route. Make sure everything is situated. And then when you can, your back leg comes up and over. It can be one fell swoop or a series of little steps. You want your thighs to cross really high up, like all the way up. And it's when your thighs cross really high up that you'll have the option of putting your right toes behind your left ankle. So we'll unravel and we'll reach the right leg back. Your fingers and elbows are moving forward. Your right leg is straightening, so it's like you're pulling yourself apart. Tug of war action. Inner rotate that right leg. Belly in. And we'll gracefully step to that lunge. Nice, long, stable lunge. Arms up, inhale. And either vinyasa or downward dog, exhale. Whether you're staying in dog or moving, we try to keep that metronome quality of the breath. I always tend to notice the breath more when the pose is really hard, or if I do like a five minute headstand, the last two minutes, I'm breathing really slowly. Okay, right foot's going to step forward again. You can lift it up or not. Lifting it might give you momentum, but really the trick to stepping forward is getting your knee close to your chest. Let's try it one more time. Step to downward dog and decide however you want to get your foot there is fine, but notice that your knee is close to your chest when it goes. And reach up. And let's twist to the right. Up the left elbow. Ah, so comfy. We're going to swing that right hip back so that we feel a stretch through this right glute. Sort of like a pigeon stretch. If you can really dig your right heel into the floor and at the same time swing your right hip back, that glute stretch is as satisfying as pigeon. Okay, we're going to keep the prayer. We're going to keep the arm hooked outside the leg. All we're going to change is look down and forward. Back foot's going to slide in, and we're just going to lift it up. Either a little bit or a lot, but we're going to try to keep reaching it back. That's going to help us balance. And gracefully step back. Mine wasn't very graceful. Hopefully yours was. Unravel the arms, lower the left knee down, half split. We'll straighten that right leg and just fold over it. Your hamstring just did a ton of work to get you from your lunge to your balance. So stretch it out a little bit. And we'll return to where we were. Oh Lordy. I say that because I know what's coming. Same thing, prayer twist, or this time bind underneath the leg. The hip thing is the same. It's just whether you feel like dealing with shoulders. So you're either prayer twist or bound twist. You're gonna look forward and down. And again, try to lift the back leg up. 
So it's either the same thing we just did, or it's with the bind. The right leg will stay bent. The left leg is straight. And step back, whoop. I unbound myself when I step back accidentally. Lower the left knee down again. And again, straighten that right leg. It just did a ton of work. Okay, bend into the right leg. Quarter turn to the left. Prasarta Parasanasana A. Hands between the feet. I'm always dusting off my mat because the cats just have tops of hairs floating around the house. We vacuum like four times a day. It doesn't help. Take one more breath here. And we'll straighten the arms and walk the hands forward. Prasarthas are great hamstring stretches. Let's step back in vinyasa. And we'll try all of these shenanigans on side two. So from down dog, step your left foot forward. And let's try stepping forward again, just so that you can practice. Do you need to lift your leg up and get momentum? Do you need to go through your rounded plank? Whatever it is. We'll meet in the lunge, left foot forward, arms up. And prayer twist, hook your right arm. Hands are going to be right in the center of the chest. So try not to have your thumb by your shoulder. Lift your chest up so that your thumb is by your chest, like between your boobs, basically. I'm just backing up because I don't know if I end up departing from screen. Okay, so we're looking forward and down. Shift the weight into the left foot. Lift the right leg up. You're pressing the left leg into your arm. And it stays bent enough, that left leg, so that you can keep your arm hooked. And step back again to the lunge. Unravel. And half split. Right knee down, left leg straight. I use the leg of my pants to wipe sweat. Because there's an opportunity there. Okay, we'll bend into that knee. Return to the twisted lunge. So the flesh of your thigh has to roll in. I literally take my hand and move the flesh in. That is how you're gonna get a bind. Because you need there to be no space between your armpit and your leg. So either binding or not, look down and forward. Shift your weight into your left foot so that your right leg can come in and eventually up. It doesn't have to be up right now. Push that leg into your arm. Whoop, I fell out of it. You come out gracefully, I hope. Lower that right knee down. Half split. There's so much happening in that pose. Okay, into prasara to D. Hamstring stretch again. Quarter turn to the right. Reach for the big toes. Inhale. And head down between the feet. Exhale. So for right now in prasara to D, just think about what I said with your triangle pose earlier. You have energy in your fingers pulling up, but your toe is pushing down. So the result is you fold very deeply. Your arms are strong, your legs are straight. Now let's straighten the arms, inhale. Walk the hands toward the top of your mat, and step back, exhale, lower down. Inhale, and exhale. Stay here for a few breaths. And 
Let's bring the right leg forward, pigeon. You decide what kind of bend you put in your knee. Most of you have heard me say this a million times, but just in case, I know some of you are new to me. I like to keep the right foot in one spot, and if I want a deeper pigeon, I move the knees back. It's a lot easier than trying to move that foot. My chest to shin if you can. Don't worry, Miss Carol, we are not putting our feet behind our head today. Okay, come to palms, lift the back knee, and let's keep that shape of pigeon. You're just gonna put your ankle on your lower left thigh. So it's down dog with a view of this number four. And you're gonna energetically push your right knee back. Just like when you were in flying pigeon, your knee was moving down toward the floor. So it's the same rotation. It just now takes a lot more work because gravity is not helping at all. And lower that right foot, normal downward dog. And bring the left leg forward to pigeon, side two. So it might start with the foot kind of close to the hip. As you get comfy, just scoot the knees back. Every day Mike goes to the nearby coffee shop to support them. And I always tell him they're going to go out of business if they don't start selling more chocolate croissants. But only one time has he come back with a chocolate croissant. You hear that, Mike? He just got home without the croissant. Okay, so palms down, lift the back knee, and let that left foot then transfer into this down dog hip stretch. So the left ankle is on the right thigh pretty securely. It's not wiggling around, moving its location. And now we have to use the fingers a lot to push our chest back so that we have an easier time pushing that knee back. And you'll see later how this escalates. Let's release that left foot down. Heels up high, inhale. Bend the knees, exhale, and jump forward. Inhale when you get there. And exhale to fold. Bend into the knees, arms up. And let's bring the right ankle to the left lower thigh again. And we're going to use this as a resting place between a few other things. If this is not restful for you, between things, you might just decide to stand instead. So we'll bring right hand, I'll just face the camera, right hand to big toe, first two fingers and thumbs, left hand to the hip, and start to extend your legs straight. So that right leg will go out to the side, and the standing leg as straight as you can get it. If you lose your balance, just do this counter with the left arm. So just like in the triangle position, your fingers are pulling up on your toe, your toe is pushing into your fingers. Let's return to that angle to knee pose. And this time, if you can, fingertips to the floor. Okay, so still working on that right hip. We're gonna rise up a little bit and we're gonna lift our leg coming inside the little hole with the right arm. And then your ankle will be on your left arm and you're just gonna rise up. I can get pretty upright most of the time, but it's possible that you're like maybe here or somewhere in between, that's fine. There's a lot of back involved. And if your back is tight, this might not work. If your hip is tight, this might not work. So it's fine if you're lower. Take one more breath. And gently place your ankle again on your lower thigh. And again, fingertips to the floor if you can. If fingertips to the floor is going well, go palms to the floor. Belly in. And if you want your arm balance here, 
your ankle and thigh have to stay with this relationship. You can't let your foot slide around on your thigh. And you'll put your palms down 12 inches in front of your toes. Flex your foot around your left arm and just start shifting your weight forward. At some point, today or not, you're gonna feel comfortable getting your left foot off the floor. It's not gonna be any scarier than having your left foot on the floor. So you shouldn't be terrified in the pose. It's just a natural evolution. And let's all somehow stand up, lower the foot, and do a little dance like you had a touchdown, loosen out your hips. Okay, so we get to do all of that on side two. So what I mean by not sliding around is I see this a lot. People start here, and my pants won't let me slide, so I'm going to actually use my hands. They end up kind of here. This is a decidedly different place. So you have to keep it where it was the whole time. Okay, hands to prayer. Left leg is up. Just relax. Okay, we'll find first fingers, first two fingers and thumbs on the left big toe, right hand to the hip, and you push the foot into the hand. If the leg is bent, something like this, still, same action, pushing. Eventually, it just pushes so far out that the leg gets straight. And bring your leg in again, ankle to lower thigh, fingers down if possible. Belly in. You don't want to overarch here. And then we'll try to stand up with our leg like a serving tray. And if you can, roll the shoulders back here. Because sometimes the, if the hip is not open, the leg will feel really heavy. And it's going to try to bring you into a slump like this. And instead, you want to roll your shoulders back and try to get your chest up. And right now, I'm fighting that a lot. And I'm not doing a perfect job. But I'm just trying to keep the shoulders back. And we'll bring our ankle down again. And we'll try to get our fingers down again. At some point, fingers down is going to be no big deal. Then you go palms down. When that's no big deal, you wrap your foot. Then you lift your back heel. Your right heel will come up. And your right tippy toes will still be down. And eventually the tippy toes come up. And eventually right leg extends back. And really, if you go slow over the years, it's no big deal. Let's slowly rise up and let it go. Shake it out. Oh my God. I'm so tired. <laughs> okay. So we're going to bring our right knee into the chest. And just interlace your fingers on the shin. Careful to not lean to the left. Sometimes this happens. So your knee is up but your hip is down. And just point your toes and flex. And again, point and flex and then roll the ankle. And go the other way. Which is important later when you go to half lotus things, you need your ankle to be functional. So keep your knee there, reach up. And just lower everything down. And just the other side, left leg in. And we're not leaning back. If we want our knee closer, we just bend the elbows. So the shoulders just stay right over the hips. Flex your left foot and point and flex and point and roll the ankle and roll the other way. Okay, keep the knee where it is. 
as best you can. Slip your hands away and reach up. And the more you can straighten your right leg, the easier it will be to keep your left knee high. Okay, let it go. Oh, Lord. Let's reach up. Both arms. Hold, exhale. Halfway up for the inhale. Step or jump back. Lower down, exhale. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Puppy pose again. Heels up high. Knees bend. So this time, instead of jumping our feet between our hands, we're going to try to bring our butt between our hands, which means our feet have to go in front of our hands. So again, we'll look forward just like before, but you're going to keep your knees by your chest as you come through so that you wind up with your butt on the ground somehow. Okay. Just like when we were standing, hold your right shin. You might find it easier now because you don't have to deal with balance. But because we're not dealing with balance, it's now really obvious. Are the shoulders sloping forward? Or can we do a better job of rolling the shoulders back so the arms stay in their sockets? Okay, slip the hands away. Half lotus if you can. If you go right heel to belly button, you'll get your foot right at the hip crease. Your knee will come in a bit, and then you can fold forward. If half lotus is not your thing, join your shasasana A, sole of foot to left thigh. And if you're in John U A, your knee is going to be facing to the side. Half lotus people, the angle is much less. Your knees are moving in toward each other. Half Lotus people, wrap your right arm behind your back. You'll know if your foot is in a good Half Lotus if you have a toe there waiting to be grabbed by your fingers. If your toe is in a weird spot, your Lotus is a little wonky. Okay, let's rise up. Extend the leg out. And let's just roll down to our backs. You can let the knees bend as you go down. Not a big deal. Just make it comfortable. And whenever you get down there, open up your arms like goalposts so that your palms are facing up, knuckles are down. And we're just going to keep the left leg there, lift the right leg up as high as you can without changing the left leg. If I wanted to keep going, my left leg would start bending up, but I'm going to try to keep the left leg straight. So there will be a limit to where that right leg can go. And lower your right leg about halfway down, so it's kind of hovering in a no man's land. And go a little lower. And go a little lower. Try to keep drawing your belly in. And gently place your right foot next to your left. Now the right leg loose to the floor, and the left leg will lift up as high as it can based on your flexibility. If we were Cirque du Soleil people, this top shin bone could be flush with our face and we wouldn't have to use our arms to make that happen. Okay, so keep your belly in. Don't let the degree of back bend that you have in your back change. Keep it constant. Start to lower your left leg to about halfway. And keep controlling in the, the core so that your back bend doesn't change. Whatever degree you have, whatever is your natural, stays the same. Just lower your left leg a little further and a little further, and then you have to work harder to keep from too much back there. And lower your left foot down all the way. Arms overhead, inhale, and we'll just roll up to sitting. However, your knees need to bend to get you up, do that. And we'll bring the left leg in. The left arm threads under the knee, and we'll roll the shoulder back. And we're going to try to get that shin bone pretty much right across the body. If your leg is out here somewhere, it does help things, but not as much. So this foot is reaching across a little bit in order to kind of level out shin bone with torso. And that's going to be important for foot behind the head 
which I swear we're not doing today, just put it in the back of your mind. Arms in the sockets. And when you can, aim your heel to your belly button so that your foot just goes right at the top of your leg. Or take your Janyushasasana. You'll fold forward. If you're in half lotus, left arm around the back. And you have about two inches of toes to grab. So the, the grip, it's a very natural thing. When you reach around, your palm is already facing down. Sometimes I see weird twisty things happening. So in this bind, less is more. Your palm is facing down and it just plunks right onto your foot. Okay, and we'll rise up, extend the leg out, and slowly lay back onto your back. So lift both legs up. You can take those goalpost arms again if you want. After all the chaturangas we do, this is a nice way to just kind of release the pecs a bit. So we're gonna bring with no hands, right ankle to lower left thigh. So you're in that number four thing. No hands. Either stay there or, and if you're staying here, this right knee is moving away from you, not dropping in toward your torso, away. Either stay there or turn it into a half lotus by letting that right foot, I'll face this way, letting that right foot kind of dance up the thigh until it's in the hip crease. And then it's the same as our friends who stayed with their ankle on the lower thigh, the knee moves away from you. Once the knee moves away, then you can put your left foot inside of the knee and you wind up in lotus. If your knee drops in toward your torso, that would not be possible. So it's that initial opening that makes it all kind of come together. So let's let that go, legs up again. And we'll just try the other side. Left ankle to lower right thigh. And this right leg can work to pull the foot in close to you. This is a great stretch. The left knee has to move away. That's really where the work is done. And then if you want, you just let that foot dance up. So this is an intentional movement. Like I said before, it has to kind of know where it should be. Each pose is gonna be different. So once you're half lotus, move your left knee away and let your right foot swing inside. And then it just dances up the rest of the way. I'll face this way. There's a lot of dancing. You see my foot is still wiggling to try to get closer to the hip crease. And let's unravel everything, legs up. And rock and roll to sit up so that you can vinyasa, we'll meet in downward dog. And let's step or jump forward, feet to hands. Inhale when you get there, and fold, exhale. We'll rise all the way to stand. You can roll your back up or not. Okay, options. If half lotus is not your jam, you're gonna go here. If half lotus is your jam, you're gonna go here. Ooh. And if you're in half lotus, your knee is facing down. Those of you in tree with the sole of the foot on your thigh, you're gonna reach up. If you're in half lotus, you're gonna wrap and fold. Let's slowly rise up if you're in half lotus about halfway. Stay for the exhale and then go the rest of the way. We're all going to meet with hands in prayer. Those of you in tree pose, you're going to change it from here to that flying pigeon. So the left leg, if you're in this, will be a little bit bent. Otherwise, it's real hard to stand there. Otherwise, you're in half lotus. We're going to reach both arms up. Inhale and fold forward, exhale. Halfway up, inhale, and into plank, exhale. So now your knee has to move up toward the ceiling. 
Those of you with ankle to knee situation, you're going to have to go to downward dog. You're not going to be able to stay here. We'll meet you in downward dog. If you're in a half lotus, chaturanga. Inhale, top of the foot, knee up if you can. And exhale, downward dog. You're either looking at that number four that we did before, or you're looking at a half lotus. Take one more breath and release the foot. Heels up high, inhale. Bend the knees, exhale, and jump forward. Inhale and fold, exhale. Rise on up and we'll bring the other leg into play. So either tree with arms up if you can or half lotus. If you're in half lotus, you might even choose to just keep holding the foot because for a while, for years maybe, the foot will be sliding down. However, it is easier if you fold. The sliding is less likely to occur. Wrap around if you can. Those of you in tree and reaching up, if this is too easy for you, you can close your eyes. A tree pose with eyes closed is crazy hard. Those of you folded, come halfway up on your inhale, stay for your exhale, and then come the rest of the way up. Arms would release. Those of you in tree, you'll bring your ankle to your lower thigh. And the whole time we're thinking knee back. We'll reach up, inhale, whoop, and fold forward, exhale. Halfway up. Inhale, and into plank, exhale. Either push back to that number four, or if you're in half lotus, you keep your left knee up as you exhale to chaturanga, as you inhale to upward facing, and as you exhale to downward facing. And then you wind up staring at your half lotus. Let's let that go. And we'll come through to sitting. So we're going to land our butt between our hands. You might want to walk your hands back a little bit so they're closer to your feet. It might make it easier. Heels up, knees bend, and then jump forward. Knees will stay in toward your shoulders as you come through. Okay, Bhattanasana. Soles of the feet together. Knees out wide, inhale, and fold forward, exhale. And you can use your arms here to give you a little pull forward. Feels pretty good. All right, we're gonna rise up and take a variation on Gomukhasana. So right leg on top, lean back enough so you can cross really high up. Remember how we did this standing. And then you're going to hold your ankles and try to bring them in sort of close to your hips. So your knees are stacked and your feet are just close by you. If you need to sit on a block, feel free or loosen this whole thing up. Once you're situated, your butt should be on something. Right arm up. Bend the elbows so your fingers are by your shoulder blades. Left arm out to the side, roll the shoulder forward, and get your fingers to touch each other. So you take each arm at a time and make sure that the rotation is possible, comfortable. You can always hold a strap or your shirt. Okay, slowly let that go. Lean back and lift the legs. And we'll just stay here in boat pose. I heard something very cute about coronavirus. We're all in the same storm, but we're all in different boats. And that's why some of us want the economy to reopen, some of us don't. Some of us might get sicker than others. 
We have different situations to deal with, but it's the same storm. Let's cross left thigh over right, as high up as you can. So these little pooches of extra flesh we have at the top of the thigh, those have to move over also. Then you know you're crossed far enough. And pull the feet in if you can. So if it worked for you to go top arm first, do that. If it didn't work for you, you could go bottom arm first. You can reach your right arm out, roll the shoulder forward. And then I'll show you from this view, sometimes people will have trouble with that rotation. So they'll take their left arm, their free arm, and try to scooch the elbow in so that that hand gets higher up. You could always do it that way and then reach the left arm up and around. It doesn't matter which arm you do first. Just see what works for you. And the only way to know what works for you is to try it a lot of different ways. Okay, we'll slowly get out of there. Boat pose, legs out. And this time we'll keep the legs there. We'll just start to lower the back to the ground. So we wind up with our legs kind of at a 45-ish place. And we'll just bring the right knee in, try to kick ourselves in the nose with that knee, and then extend it out and bring the other leg in. And then lower your head down, bring your right leg in again to the shoulder if possible. Extend the right leg out, bring the left leg in to the shoulder if possible. And both legs out, arms overhead. And exhale, knees, both of them, to the nose. Legs and arms out, inhale. And then knees to the shoulder. Keep your feet touching if possible. One more time, just like that. Inhale, so the inner edges of the feet touch. Exhale, knees to the shoulder, the feet are still touching. Inhale, reach out, and then just start, start rocking and rolling until you can sit up, and let's vinyasa. We'll meet in downward dog. Okay, so those of you who are comfortable in half lotus, you're going to take your right leg into a half lotus from here. So that would literally mean that your left hand and your right foot will be off the ground for a moment while you get your half lotus. Then you'll just put your left hand down again. So there is a moment of precariousness and you just kind of whip it in. Those of you in half lotus, you're going to jump your left foot forward and come onto your knee. Those of you who half lotus is not comfy, you're going to be a normal down dog and you'll jump onto your right knee and have your left foot, I'll face this way, your left foot near it. So this is pretty much the arrangement of the legs. It's just, is your right leg nice conveniently behind you or is it folded up and a little bit more awkward? So you decide what your right leg is doing. Either way, your left foot and your right knee are down. Cross your arms, right over left. You did this arm position already. So theoretically, it's feeling okay. Elbows up, chest up, crown of the head up. And slowly let that go. Step into downward dog. Those of you in half lotus, let it go. Normally, from there, you would do a vinyasa, like what we did earlier. But this is new to a lot of you, so I don't want to kill you right away. This is like a, a little intro. So left foot to half lotus. Jump the right foot forward. Those of you not in half lotus, it will look much the same. Your foot and your knee are pretty close together. So you decide half lotus or just leg out nicely. Right arm under. Was that true? I don't know. Sometimes I think I'm not true to my arms. So do the way that feels a little harder. I can't tell right now what that would be. 
They feel the same. So we're trying to lift the fingertips up toward the ceiling so that we're not quite as far forward leaning. And then slowly get out of there. Downward dog. Those of you who do want to go for it, you would be in a plank. Half lotus chaturanga, half lotus upward facing, and then you end up in down dog anyway. And let's release that left foot so we're all in a nice symmetrical downward dog. Okay, let's come to hands and knees. So some of that stuff we did from our backs, we're gonna do from headstand. I just have to wipe all the sweat away so it doesn't drip in my eyeballs. Okay, so we're gonna take this headstand, just the nice easy one, measure out your elbows, make sure you feel secure. Maybe that means you need a wall behind you, or maybe that means you keep your feet on the ground. That will still develop the shoulder strength and flexibility if you keep your feet on the ground. When you're ready, place your head and start to lift your legs. And whenever your legs get up to whatever height you want them to go, they don't have to go all the way up, you're going to press the inner edges of your feet together so that you are very aware that you have two legs. Let's start to bend the knees and bring them in toward the armpits, but keep your feet pressing into each other. Lift up again. Keep your feet pressing into each other. One more time, as low as you can get them. Round your back. And then rising up, keeping your feet together. The exit will either be child's pose or through a vinyasa. If you want to go through a vinyasa, loosen the grip of your fingers. They have to be more relaxed. Then change your hands to chaturanga position, to tripod position, as you lower your legs. You end up in chaturanga. Then complete the vinyasa. Heidi, don't land on your belly. I know you're guilty of that sometimes, but just force yourself to get through to downward dog. And then you can rest. Even though sometimes down dog is not that restful. And those of you in child's pose, let's all come into down dog. We'll bring the right foot forward to the hands. Lower the left knee down. Let's turn the right foot out to the side a little bit. Let the knee move away from the shoulder. Walk your hands forward and out, and maybe drop your chest. It will be close to your heel. And we'll come on up. Either left forearm or palm down, we're gonna reach back with that right hand and just let the leg kick back to take our shoulder with it. Slowly unravel and just change sides. You can step to downward dog to change or you can step forward to change. And we wind up with that left foot facing a maybe 45 degree angle. And this is opening your left hip and this right hip flexor. You've already done a lot of hip openers. So it's possible that the left hip is not going to be your limiting factor here for how far down you go. I have quite a bit of weight in the hands, just FYI. If I didn't, it would be too much in the hip. So you just decide, but as much weight as you need in your hands. And we'll come up again. We'll have our right hand or forearm down, left hand back. 
and just let that right foot kick back a bit it will take your left shoulder back it's not a whole lot of work right now sort of relaxing comparatively speaking and slowly let that go and either vinyasa or step to downward dog we'll bring the right foot forward between the hands left knee down hands to that right knee and we're going to nudge it forward a little more as if it's going to go over the toes mine right now is not i have a pretty long stance so I'm just digging this heel into the floor and trying to bend the front knee more. It won't go anymore. When you can, you're gonna reach both hands back. So do a little shoulder rotation first, a little shoulder loop, up and around. As if your elbows are gonna to touch the back of your mat, then your chest will feel open. Bend the back leg, find your ankle with your hands. You might want to strap or you might want to just use one hand instead of both. So we're not going to take the back foot to the floor today. We're just going to keep bending the front knee as much as we can. And the result will be a crazy stretch for the pectoral muscles, for the shoulders, for that left hip flexor. Oh my God, my left quad is on fire. Take one more breath. And slowly let that go. Change sides however you want to change. We end up with left foot in front, hands to that knee, and we're just trying to bend the front knee a little deeper. When you can, arms will come away. I like to do a robot arm thing. And if you roll your shoulders forward, it's much easier to get them back. It's almost like the momentum. You have like a little launch pad, a little trampoline. The further down you go, the heavier you are, the higher up you go. So with the elbows back and the chest open, you reach back with your hands. Interlace the fingers on the ankle if you can. Otherwise, either use a strap or have just one hand. And try to keep bending your front leg. Okay, slowly get out of there. Vinyasa or downward dog. Let's, okay, good. Let's jump onto the shins. Virasana. If Virasana is not for you, you could sit on a block if it's still not for you. Repeat what we just did. What the one leg in front thing, that low lunge on Janayasana, it's excellent for this, never gets old. So those of you coming into Virasana, you're gonna attempt Supta Virasana which means reclining. You might need to do one leg at a time in Supta Virasana because it's tricky for the knees, the ankles. So the idea here is to stretch the quads and the hip flexors. You should not feel uncomfortable in your low back. However, it's really hard and it takes a lot of dedication to your practice to overcome that. One thing you can do is push harder into your toenails. But if the feet work more, you're gonna be able to tuck your tailbone more. You'll have less back bend here in the, in the pelvis. Let's start to come up again. If you were in a one-legged form, just make sure you spend equal time on both sides, even if it was an Anjaneyasana. We're all gonna meet in down dog, and that will give you time to even out your left and right sides if you were not symmetrical. Because those of us from Virasana, we need this to re-straighten the legs. OK. 
Okay. So from down dog, we'll just walk the feet forward and roll up. We'll attempt to do the same thing we did from Anjanayasana in a standing balance. So weight in the left foot, right hand to ankle, left hand to ankle. It will be easier to get both hands if you bend your standing leg, because then you can kind of wiggle more. But once you're situated, standing leg straight. And then you're going to kick. And as you kick, your toes will go up and your chest will go forward. And you'll be working your right leg like crazy. Take one more breath here. And you're going to keep your left hand gripped on your ankle and lower your right fingers to the floor. Try to kick a little bit higher. You wind up with a great hamstring stretch for the standing leg. Standing split, right leg up. The left hand will just come down. And then just lower the right foot down. Bend both knees and roll up. The standing split was really just so we don't rubber band out of the pose. More of a transition than anything. So take your shoulders back. You might do that same robot arm, elbows back rotation. Then when you can, hands to the ankle. I like to interlace all the way to the webbing of the fingers and kick. Kick as hard as you can, chest forward. Don't worry about saving your energy for later. Later will take care of itself later. Right now, just be here. Kick as best you can. And we'll keep the right hand there and lower the left fingers. Keep kicking. Let the right hand come down, but keep kicking so that your left leg goes up and then lower your left foot to meet your right. Drop your head. And let's come into a squat and then down onto your back. And we'll just take a few more back bends. Yeah. Let's take three back bends without more than one breath of rest in between. So I'm gonna count us through this. It's gonna be challenging more mentally than anything. So let's come up to either Urdhva Dhanurasana or Setu Bandha Sarvangasana. Lift up, inhale. And we're gonna stay here for five breaths. It's one. Two. Those of you in Urdhva, chest over forearm as much as you can, so you don't have too much bend in your wrists. Four, five. Come on down. We're down for one breath, in. And exhale, hands place again, rise up, inhale. One, press into your feet, two, so that your pubic bone goes up higher. Three, four, and five. Come on down, elbows in as you lower. We stay here for an inhale, and we stay here for an exhale. And last time, we're gonna come up, inhale. One, Two, three, four, and five. Slowly come on down. And we'll just bring the legs up to the ceiling so that we're in an L shape. Let's bring the arms to goalpost again. So your elbows are bent 90 degrees, knuckles down, palms facing up. And bend the knees in toward the chest and rock them over to the left elbow. 
gaze over the right shoulder. And one leg at a time, come through center, over to the other side. And one leg at a time through center. We're going to lower the soles of the feet to the floor, maybe max width-ish, and it's going to look very sloppy. We're just going to drop our knees to the left. It kind of looks like we just fell off a ladder. But let this right waist stretch. You might want to reach your right arm back. And you might want to put your left foot on your right knee and let your right knee move closer to the floor. And release that and sloppy twist over to the right. Maybe left arm over the ear, right foot to that left knee, just encouraging it to move down, but not really a yank. It will only go so far. And bring it back through center, knees to the chest, rock a little side to side, and then sit it up, Hashimotanasana. You can have your legs bent if you want. You're going to hold the edges of your feet and start to fold forward. You can always start with your knees bent and over the next few breaths, make them more straight. One of the great things about holding the edges of the feet is you can pull the pinky toe edge back as you push the ball of your foot forward. Same would be true if you interlace your fingers underneath your feet. Then it's like your wrists are pulling the pinky edge back. And let's rise up. We'll take one more Baddha soles of the feet together. Knees drop out. And you decide, do you extend your spine forward and let your head land somewhere in front of your feet? Or do you make it more rounded to counterbalance your back bends? and bring your head more toward your feet. If you're going for the B position, head toward the feet, it's a lot of Uddiyama Bandha. So you have to draw your belly button in like mad and try to make your back round in all the places that it doesn't want to. Let's slowly rise up and just cross the legs in lotus or something. And we're just going to sit for a few breaths, hands on the knees, either face up or face down. And just visualize your breath as an elevator. And your spine is the elevator shaft. And for this particular few minutes of pranayama, the elevator is not going to stop. There's a million different ways to do breathing exercises. But for right now, just let it be a smooth ride from the basement all the way to the attic and back down again. Feel free to stay like that for your Shavasana. I apologize that I went a few minutes over. It is 11, almost 11.30 now. So we'll probably be like five minutes over. And if you notice that in your Shavasana, like halfway through, something is uncomfortable, like you're starting to think about your back or your knee, you need to shift your position. There's no sense in wading through 
and making yourself deal with any discomfort. Shiva, 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 Shambho. Mahadeva, Shambho. Shiva, 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 Shambho. Mahadeva, Shambho. Take a few more breaths to get a little bit heavier on your mat. Chest the ground in your house that it can hold you. It is never too late to do that. So if your Shavasana was full of stress or angst, you still have time. Even if it's only a breath or two, it can still change everything. And let's start to rise up. Keep the eyes closed. Doesn't matter what direction you face or how you arrange your legs. Just try to get your shoulders over your hips, your ears over your shoulders, so that you can sit with very minimal effort. We'll bring the hands together and fold forward. Namaste. Namaste.